As of launching this video, AMD have just released their Radeon settings Crimson Relive driver, an update to the Crimson driver launched last year. There are going to be loads of other much more detailed reviews on the features such as Radeon Chill that drops the core speed dynamically to save power, but this video is specifically on the Relive recording feature. It allows you to record gameplay easily, add a webcam, custom PNG overlay, change the output bit rate, livestream directly from the driver, add your system info, and a nice enough toolbar as you can see in just a second uh, with a relative limited amount of uh, settings available on the toolbar versus in the driver itself. To test the performance, I'm using Unigen Heaven and the built-in benchmarks of GTA 5 and Dirt Rally, as I wanted a repeatable result that when I hit benchmark I get the exact same number every time so I can rule out my lack of skill when playing games to show the actual performance differences. To test the AMD driver, I'm using an RX 480 and a Windows 10 PC. I repeated the results multiple times to make sure my analysis is correct, so the footage you'll see of the benchmark results is representative of the results I got for both cards. Since I'm not directly comparing the GPUs here, only the performance difference between recording and not, I'm using a GTX 1060 for the Nvidia side. As you can see, my initial benchmark came out at 83.9, basically 84 FPS. The little recording timer is visible in both the recordings and on screen, although I'm not sure if you can turn it off or not. This is a clip of the recording while Unigen was benchmarking. I love how the footage came out and the ability to alter the bit rate is brilliant too. The second benchmark shows roughly 2 FPS drop from the recording to, uh, during the benchmark, something I'd say is perfectly acceptable and perhaps it even could be labelled pretty insignificant. As expected, GTA 5 shows a pretty similar result. The footage of this too looks really nice. This is set to 30 megabits uh, per second recording, while Twitch has a limit of only 3.5 megabits per second, so your recordings will look much better than the stream you go to that goes to Twitch. The results we're looking for here are the bottom right number as that's what I consider the most realistic run the benchmark does. As you can see there is around a 3 FPS difference, again that's pretty small especially when you're talking about 110 FPS average. Of all the footage, Dirt Rally has to be my favourite. I love how it looks with the trees and gravel rushing past and I think I'll be using some of this footage to update my normal benchmarking footage uh, that I show for benchmarking graphics cards and laptops and that sort of stuff. In terms of benchmarks, as you can see here, there's about a 4 FPS difference, though through multiple runs I saw this be as low as about 2 FPS, but once again it's pretty small. I just want to take a second to be annoyed here. Why do you have to sign in to use this stuff? Sure, you could have it as an option if you want to save your preferences or connect to a shield, but otherwise there is no reason why you have to sign in. Yeah, anyway, since Shadowplay has been around for longer, the UI, for me anyway, is a bit better. There are more options in the toolbar too, which I personally like, and the footage is pretty much the same quality as you can see here. As far as I'm aware, you can't change the bitrate of this footage, meaning you'd be stuck with fairly large file sizes, but I could be wrong there. Performance-wise, it's basically like it isn't recording. Of the multiple tests I did, they all came back basically the same or within margin of error, which is really, really impressive. GTA 5 is the same, the footage here looks awesome, although I'd need to do a blind A-B test to really see much of a difference between this and AMD's footage. Looking at the bottom result, you will see 131 when recording versus 132 when not, but if you look at again at some of the ones above, you might see the game is actually running faster when recording, so that varies uh, quite a bit there. Once again, Dirt Rally is the same story too. Absolutely beautiful footage, this time without a timer at the bottom, and next to no performance hit at all, at least from my testing anyway. This could potentially be limited to what CPU you have too, but since I'm using a socket 1151 i7, I'm pretty good here. As you can see 104.2 versus 104.8. So as you can see the performance difference from real life uh, versus not recording using it is uh, you know really not that massive. Now if you're looking at getting 110, 120 FPS and you're dropping 4 FPS you may be thinking oh my god I'm losing FPS here this is this is an insane drop uh, but it really isn't it's really not noticeable and even when you're getting something like 60 FPS uh, and you're only going to drop 1 to 2 FPS uh, you know while recording so again it really is is much better than it used to be I mean if uh, you're old enough to remember fraps yes uh, I am making an old enough reference, um, then you'll uh, remember just how terrible that was for recording stuff, so yeah, that's a thing. 
Um, and overall, to compare real life to shadow play, performance difference, obviously shadow play has the edge there just because it's a longer standing technology that's been out for a longer period of time. So they've been able to optimize it and improve it a little bit. Um, personally, the interface, I prefer the uh, shadow play implementation, being able to change some settings, uh, quite a lot of them, including the hotkeys, uh, well, you know, just hitting Alt Z or Alt Z, depending on where you are. Uh, but at the same time, I actually prefer the real life feature set, being able to change the bit rate, being able to add a custom overlay, a PNG file, um, and that sort of stuff. So uh, personally, I think in six months time, Relive will be a much better feature. At the current point in time, just because Shadowplay has existed for longer, uh, it's currently a more optimized platform, but uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend you choose uh, your GPU based on just these two features anyway. They're kind of just added selling points. Uh, another thing to mention is that if you already have an AMD GPU, this is a free upgrade. It's just, it's part of the driver now. It's a free thing that you can use if you want to, uh, which is just nice that that's included. It's a, you know, as I said, free thing that you just get. So, uh, you know, I can't criticize it all that much. It's not like it's a paid software or anything. So uh, that's cool. But um, the overarching point that I want to make here is that if you really want to be, you know, pro Twitch streamer, pro YouTube streamer, whatever, uh, then I personally just recommend using OBS. It works on both NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards. Uh, it uses the hardware encoders to encode the videos. It's more customizable. It has more features considerably. Uh, you can do a lot more stuff with it. You can have a lot more inputs than just a webcam and gameplay. Uh, you can do a lot more cool stuff with it. You can stream to multiple places if you want to uh, and all that sort of stuff. So. While for the casual user who just wants to record some gameplay and share it with their friends, Shadowplay and Relive are actually really great options. Uh, if you want to go kind of pro with it, uh, which is somewhat where Relive is kind of uh, kind of trying to bridge the gap into, uh, then OBS or even XSplit, if you don't mind paying some money, uh, is is what I personally recommend. So I guess that's kind of my conclusion, really. If you want to check out more information, uh, I'll leave a few links to other, uh, you know, reviews and stuff like that uh, once this video goes live, because obviously those reviews won't go live until the same time. So uh, I'll try to leave those down below. And also feel free to let me know what you think of the driver and this feature specifically in the comments down below too. If you've got any improvements you'd like to see me or AMD make, then feel free to leave those in the comments too. If you enjoyed the video and found it entertaining and uh, just generally informative, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you did enjoy or just any thoughts you have on the driver uh, in the comments down below too. Uh, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter as well. And if you want to support me, please do use the Amazon affiliate link when you're buying anything on Amazon. It genuinely does help me out. So please do use uh, those uh, the global links down there for you too. So uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you all in the next one.